This video walks you through the process of cutting an access door into a drywall ceiling and installing wooden trim for a finished look. This ceiling had limited access and the owner suspected the attic was improperly insulated. It was decided to cut a new access door inside the bedroom just inside the door where it would be least visible. We'll be cutting into drywall and the process does create dust, so spread a drop cloth with an assistant, turn off any heating or air conditioning, and cover anything like electronics that could be damaged by dust. Before making any cuts, we'll need to make sure we know where the studs are that run behind the drywall. Using a cheap stud sensor, they cost about $10 or $15 at your local hardware store, and a pencil, we can mark out the layout of any studs and lay out the position of the new access door. Use a tape measure to make sure the edges of the new door are parallel to the nearest wall. The blue tape doesn't damage the paint and helps to visualize the layout. Since we'll be using the piece of drywall that we cut out as the removable door, the exact size of the door doesn't matter. We do want to measure to the nearest wall, however, to make sure that we lay it out parallel and square. You can buy a purpose-made drywall saw, but we used a sawzall blade and a pair of vice grips. The sharp tip punches right through to start the cut. It's a good idea to shut off the main electrical breaker before you start cutting, just in case. With any luck, you should be able to push the blade up into the open attic space, just inside where you marked out the studs with the stud finder. It's a little bit more work doing this by hand, but as you start to cut, you should be able to feel if you start cutting into a stud or hidden pipe. With power tools, you might not realize it until it was too late. As you make the cuts across each side, Leave about an inch or so that's uncut on each side. As you do this, it'll hold the drywall panel in place until you're ready to make the cuts at the very end. This helps it from falling on your face or falling out halfway while you're still trying to cut it out. Once it's cut all the way around except for just an inch or so, have an assistant support it and then cut the final last little bit to pop out that piece. With the panel removed, we can now see that there's actually an additional stud laying up above the other studs. It didn't show up on our stud finder, and it's going to create a problem, so we will have to remove it. We can now take a look up in the attic and see what the insulation situation is. As we suspected, there's not a single bit of insulation up there. That's bad news for the insulation contractor. They're going to need to come back and fix this. Before we cut out that piece that's blocking the access door, we're going to install a couple 2x4s to support all the studs up in the attic and make sure that nothing moves. We're installing one on each side of the door and just screwing it in. With the bracing installed, we're now ready to cut out the piece that's blocking the door. Pull off the blue tape to get it ready for the trim. This is two and a half inch wide trim that we picked up at the local hardware store. The 45 degree angles cut at each end of the trim were done at the store using their miter box and saw right in the trim aisle. To get the measurements for the trim, we first measured the hole itself and then added an extra two and three quarters inches to each direction. It's critical that the first piece that you nail up is aligned and straight. All the other pieces will be based off this first piece. Once it's nailed in, use the first piece and a square to get the direction and layout of the next piece. To get the layout for the third piece, we'll actually temporarily install the fourth piece and hold it up there to make sure the third piece is in the right position. Once it's nailed in, the only thing that's left is to nail in the fourth piece. At this point, you're ready to take that piece of drywall that you cut out, slide it back up into the hole, and then drop it down on top of the newly installed trim. The trim was already pre-primed from the hardware store, but we do want to make sure to use a little bit of caulk to fill in all the cracks and gaps and the nail holes to make it look like a real finished piece. That's it. It's now ready for the insulation contractors to come in and they can use that access point to blow some new insulation up into this attic. Thanks a lot for watching and we hope you'll take just a moment or two to like this video and even subscribe to our channel.